morning. Good morning. Happy Tuesday. Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, Dr. Mary's on a roll. Found a second <laughs> article. Um, we have gotten to be uh, or started reading a number of people who write about addiction. You know, my question is just anecdotally, this isn't really related to any great learning insight, but my question is why are we paying attention to their content? We're creating content. It's funny. I mean, I don't mind. I don't mind that other people's content is inspiring ours, but it's funny that we are looking to them. We should be writing on Medium. Shouldn't we be writing on Medium? Maybe. I don't know. Do I need another thing to do in my life? I don't think I do. Maybe you do, Dr. Mary. You're actually a really nice writer, so maybe we'll think about that. Yeah. I should dictate, though. Cause I'm <laughs> well, you shouldn't type it, uh, yeah. for heaven's sakes. No, let's not be crazy. I'm, Dr. A, I'm Mary, a good writer, but a slow typer. Dr. Mary types like, um, oh, maybe our dog Lily would type. I was going to say like a child, but children today are expert typers, typists. So anyway, what are we talking about today? The relapse myth. The relapse myth. So I think this is an interesting topic um, because, boy, this was something I feel like I didn't know anything about. I remember saying to you while you were still in rehab, because there were definitely, there's, there's a um, grief cycle to living through this, to watching someone get sober. I'm assuming that it's pretty consistent for a lot of people, but I definitely went through fear, anger, sadness, uncertainty. I mean, all, all those all those cycles. And so when I was in a anger piece of that cycle, I remember saying to you, I will never do this again. I will never go through this with you again. This is one and done. Um, and then somewhere along the way, I read about how prevalent relapses are, which pushed me right back into despair. And then you actually came home and introduced this idea of the difference between a lapse and a relapse. So explain that again, because we haven't talked about that for a while. Yeah, well, just a little bit backstory on that. That was one of the first things I heard when I actually went to rehab was the, the relapse thing, which immediately scared the, the Jesus out of me. And of course, being the old Irish Catholic that I am, I thought, We've, there is no hope. Yeah. And even people I knew were saying, and even people we know said to Dana, oh, he's an alcoholic, he'll never get better. Yes. Yes, I have a friend who, when I finally told her, I forgot about this, when I finally told her, said to me that I was um, delusional. That once an alcoholic, once an addict, always an alcoholic and an addict, and I was stupid to stay. It took me a long time to get over that, and I don't know that she knows she did it. Um, I mean, it could have been a knee-jerk reaction. They could have been have. going on this. This is, I mean, as to making our own content, content. Yes, you can, but you can use other people's as a roadmap. You don't just as long as you don't fog it off as your own. What well, this? Yeah, we've moved on from that. Um, yeah, it's interesting. So you need to explain lap relapses and lapses, please. So a relapse is, say, you um, start drinking again or using again, and you end up um, in a hospital. Usually, um, I, I think most people that actually end up drinking again end up in a psychiatric hospital to start with. And then they, oh, do you think that's true? Yeah, well, a lot of that. That's what one of the flaws of Prairie Saint John is. It's just. Dead. One of the floors, floors, not one of the flaws. Floors, <laughs> as in a, a ward yes, on a floor. Yes, yes, yes. Is, is for that purpose, because when you start drinking, if you're an alcoholic, most of the time you actually just don't stop. I mean, literally, oh. you just keep going. Well, certainly, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but certainly if you think about Dr. Christina Kraft last week talked about um, that she knows if she went back to drinking, she wouldn't ease into drinking. She'd go all yeah. the way back. And we've had a lot of... A lot of guests who've said that and one thing that I've heard you say many times that I've also heard other guests say is um, one is too many and ten isn't enough and that's such a I think that's a really powerful way to begin to have a comprehension of what drinking does to 
an addict that it doesn't necessarily do to the rest of us. One is too many and 10 is not enough. So, okay, now for the third time, I'm gonna to try to stop talking. <laughs> so a relapse is when you go all the way back to consistent drinking yeah. for a whatever period of time you define it as. Okay, what's a lapse, Dr. A lapse, I mean, this happens, I've had, I've, I've had lapses explained to me in AA meetings that they range from being at a daughter's wedding and think, oh, I can have one drink and end up getting drunk that night and then saying, that's it, no more. And they're full of remorse and then they start again and, and just inevitably they go back to their 24 hour chip and start again one day at a time. But they haven't been hospitalized and you learn from it. That's a, and a lapse could be anything. I mean, a lot of people say a lapse could be just a, a, a sudden amount of stress hitting them broadside out of, out of you know, out of nowhere. Um, so loss they of, have a drink. Loss of a family member. And it also depends on how long you've been sober. And it also depends on the amount of stress you can take too. I mean, you know, it's not, but that never gets taken into account, which is why this myth exists. The myth is once a drunk, always a drunk, basically. And it's actually not true. What a, what a terrible myth. I mean, think about, you know, if, if somebody gets cancer and survives cancer, I think we don't say to them, well, sure, you're healthy today, but you know, you're gonna die of cancer. We don't say that to people no. who have cancer. We don't say um, to people who got divorced, well, okay, so you're remarried, but you can't possibly stay remarried because once divorced, always divorced. Why, why in the world have we gotten so comfortable judging people who suffer with addiction? Yeah, I'm glad you brought that because one of the, the, the author of this article brings out a very good point. He's, they, they I say, think it's a woman. It is a woman, actually. I, sh I do apologize. They say, or she says, um, now, some of this could have started with well-intentioned sort of, hey, you know, don't forget you're an alcoholic. Right. So you never, you don't, you can't drink again because if you drink again, you had it, which could be a, a very odd way of spurring someone on. But again, as, as time goes by, it does become a myth. And people who start off in recovery hear this and it scares them. It scared me. Not only does it scare you, but it creates a hopelessness. Well, if I'm going to be an yeah. alcoholic anyway, if it's inevitable, then I may as well just stop trying because actually for a number of addicts we've talked to, they really like drinking. They really miss drinking. So if what you're saying to someone who misses something, you know you're not going to successfully avoid it anyway, why not go back to it? I mean, it's such a it's such a damning verdict to pass on someone when you have no idea if they can stay sober or not. So they may not know. Thankfully, the reality of this is it simply isn't true. Yes, although I was surprised to read that um, it has been scientifically proven that the first year yeah. is, wh where is that section, will you? Unfortunately, oh, right the statistics show that it's true that most people with less than a year of sobriety will relapse. However, and here's the thing that's underlined in bold, almost they should have italicized it too, like I like to do to really. To really However, the important counterpoint is that most people with <laughs> over a year <laughs> of sobriety will not relapse. Write that down. <laughs> yes, that will be on the Scantron test. That's on the test. There's a, clear, there's a little hint for those who came to class today. Um, at five years of sobriety, the relapse yeah. rate drops to, to as low oh, as 15%. 15%. And that is interesting to me because that, it goes with a statistic that, um, not to get all biology about you, but... You can, it is your thing. Um, the reasons why, um, well, one of the many reasons why smoking is bad for your lungs is, one, it will give you lung cancer. But another one is other diseases, COPD, scarring in your lungs, where they stop being elastic. That's all because of the crap that you breathe in, because smoking destroys these fine little hair-like structures um, called cilia, cilia that 
go all the way down your respiratory tract. Now their function is to stop dirt that you breathe in with mucus, stop it, and then they waft it back to your throat so you hack it up. That's even why we have little hairs in our nose, right? Yes. It's I a said filter that system. like you could tell. Yes, look, I have not shaved. <laughs> in, no. But, um, um, Sorry, I knocked you right off your science. Your those hairs, those hairs get destroyed, or those little structures get destroyed when you buy cigarette smoke. But if you stop smoking for over five years, it's been shown they did massive survey, a lot of people smoked, they grow back and they become functional again. After five or six years, statistically, your chances of developing some form of lung cancer drop to the same levels as someone who could pick up secondhand smoking. Wow. So how is that relating to because your point here? Because the statistics of over five years, over 10 years, mm -hmm. as the percentage of people who might start drinking again drops and drops, it's the further you, the longer you stay away from something, the least likely you are to do a relapse. It's the same with most diseases. Well, it's the same with most things. I mean, if you lose a load of weight and can keep it off for five years, you're more likely to keep it off, correct? Yep. Hmm. It's a, it's a mind sense thing. And another thing that this article goes on to say is, um, what a, how the, the myth started, if you look at all the celebrity, celebrities, famous people who are in the spotlight, who, you know, says, oh, I've been in and out of rehab four or five times, you know, the real sort of, and they go on like celebrity big, big brother or something, and it's just train wrecks. That's what people equate to people who try to, 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 to get off an addiction, and it's not. And these people are a subset of, you know, they're in the limelight. Well, they're also... They're under a microscope. Yeah, and, and they're a subset of addicts. Yeah, because the they're same flawed way, because they want attention. Well, I, I don't know that you can even necessarily make it that simple. I think they, they have real problems and they are exacerbated by the fact that yeah. they are also being looked at all the I mean, time. It must, be, it must be incredibly stressful to be famous enough for someone to want to follow you around and see what you're doing every moment. I would think it would be. Um, so, I just, I think there's something, I think there's a very fine line between trying to be helpful to someone. So we, we have a mutual friend who, um, when I met her, gosh, almost 25 years ago, she'd already been sober for quite some time. And so I only knew her as a sober person, but I knew because she was very open about it that she had been quite an alcoholic. So 10 years ago, maybe, we ran into her in a restaurant and she was holding a glass of wine. Now, keep in mind, 10 years ago, Maz was still drinking. I didn't know anything about alcoholism, addiction, recovery. I didn't know Maz was an al alcoholic, all those things. Uh, but she came up to see us carrying a glass of wine and I asked her, what she was doing and she said oh I drink now and I remember thinking what <laughs> like I, and I, I didn't say anything to her because I wouldn't have even known how to try to be helpful if I had thought I could be but I've never forgotten it and I I actually think to some extent based on the times we have seen her I think she has sort of figured out how to be a casual drinker, which is very surprising. Yeah. Um, but I think there is a, my whole point of this is that there's a fine line when you are a helper <laughs> between trying to encourage someone to stay sober and being judgmental as if you could possibly have any real idea. Maybe, maybe one of the truest things that I have discovered over time, over all these conversations, and I've said this many times, is while the, the similarities to addiction are evident and very, very clear, the uniqueness to each addict yeah. is equally clear. So you can't look at, you can't look, I believe, 
at a group of 10 people who've been sober one month and say with any certainty which of them will stay sober no, i don't believe not. you can and the uh, the author makes a very good point well, i know we're running out of time here but i want to mention her last paragraph um she says i no longer view relapse as inevitable mm. um, it's a possibility it's an unlikely possibility the simple truth is that most addicts who have been um, abstinent long enough don't end up relapsing it's um although i remain vigilant about my sobriety i am optimistic about my continued success again i like i i, I may have mentioned on this show i do have that mindset myself i if you are consumed about worrying about not lap or, or relapsing you are going to miss your life the mm. same way you did when you were really gripped in your addiction yeah you have to take a breath and look around you and just you know take in a moment and say yep i'm sober and this is enjoyable but don't think about that you're going to relapse i mean it probably if you think about it long enough you might talk yourself into it well and the true reality is none of us knows what's going to happen in the next three minutes yeah. so you can be consumed with all the things that could happen all the things that could go wrong all the bad decisions you could make or you could just friggin live your life and do the best you can which is good advice for everyone yes it is so have a great day um yeah i don't think we have any asks for you today have a great day we'll see you tomorrow see you tomorrow bye